Inside the Inventor tooling environment, we actually have an integration with another Autodesk product. This integration is part of the initial installation of your Inventor professional software. The integration deals with an acquisition that Autodesk made a couple of years ago with a company called Moldflow. The Moldflow integration is actually a subset of analysis tools inside of our design environment. Now, Moldflow is a separate product and has different variations, such as Moldflow Insight and Moldflow Advisor, all of which do advanced analysis on mold design and plastic flow analysis for this type of work. Those softwares can range anywhere from $28,000 to $45,000, and they're quite expensive if you do a lot of mold-based work. For here, we just want to get a good idea before things are passed up to a very high-end simulation product that our mold is actually going to do what we expect it to do. Or if we're confident enough in these results, we can move forward as well. So to begin with, we'll just kind of make sure that the mold functionality is loaded. If we go up to our Tools tab and click on Add-ins, we will see a mold design. You can see it's automatically loaded, so we won't have any trouble there. I'll go ahead and OK that to close it. We can find these different analysis tools in different sub-environments of the software. For instance, if we start looking on the Mold Layout tab on the Mold Simulation panel, we can click on Mold Process Settings. If you click on this and you get an error message saying something's not loaded, you might have to repair your installation or contact Autodesk if something's not quite working right with your integration. I actually did run into a small issue with that when I was working on this course, and Autodesk was able to patch it for me. Now, if you click on the mold process settings and nothing loads, you might have to repair your installation with a clean uninstall and reinstall. That has happened to me in the past from time to time, but it's a little bit more rare. When you click on mold process settings, it does bring up the mold flow integration in the background and allow you to adjust certain settings, such as mold temperature, the injection limit pressure, the injection time, the clamp open time as well. So you got some simulation process settings to set up in here. There's also a suggest tab if you would like the software to try to guess for you. I'm gonna choose okay here. There's also a mold fill analysis, which will actually do an entire fill analysis of your design. If you click start to this, it's gonna take a while because it actually runs this add-in inside of the software. It does run in the background, but it's something that will take a long time to finish. I'm not gonna do that just right now because I've actually already run it. I'm gonna close this. We can also find these sorts of settings inside of our core and cavity creation or our plastic part design. If I were to go to my cartridge up coat node on the left hand side, if I right click and choose edit component, it takes me down inside of that and I can see inside of that particular component right now, but you notice I'm not seeing my mold tools. So let me hit return to get back up there. If I simply double click on it, you can see instead it takes me into that environment to work on this particular item in a mold centric style. So I have my adjust orientation, my gate location, my part process settings, and that's another thing that if I click on, I'll get information about. Here is my material properties as well. I'll say okay. Part fill analysis, this will analyze the fill of my particular part this one I will run by choosing start, and it'll tell me that analysis has started. I can close my dialog. The analysis will continue. The dialog can be reopened any time to see how that progress is going. So I'm going to choose OK to let that start. Again, this does take some time. We'll let that go. I'll just go ahead and close the dialog. While that's running, I'm going to expand my node here for my cartridge up coat. You can see currently my results are grayed out, so they have not finished. You can see my fill analysis is still running. Let me go ahead and click on that again. Even though it's still running, it does kind of restart that progress bar. Don't be alarmed by that. And we'll just let that finish. Now, when this does finish, we do have the options to see multiple types of results for how plastic would flow into our design. Now, that type of flow is dependent upon multiple factors. It's dependent upon what type of material we choose, the type of the part process settings we select as well. So let me go ahead and look at these results. Here's my actual filling time, my injection pressure, my clamp force area. You can see all those things I would have selected during the part process settings. I also have my cycle time breakdown and no problems in the solver. 
I click on general, you can see a little bit more information about that as well. The type of material that's in play, my melt temperature, my mold temperature, my injection locations. I only had one in this particular case. I'll go ahead and cancel that. Now, my node on the left hand side does have a result highlighted. It does show a color to it now instead of that grayed out color. So there's my fill analysis. And here I can look at my fill time. If I double click on it, it'll show me my part and the type of time it's going to take to fill that particular piece with this graph on the right hand side. I can look at plastic flow as well. I can look at my confidence of fill. So I have a high confidence that's going to fill for me. A quality prediction. So where I have areas of high quality, medium quality, or perhaps low quality based on the solver. I can also look at air traps. And you'll notice the air traps kind of coincide with where I might have areas of poor quality. These magenta lines signify the air traps. And I can also look at weld lines. Now weld lines are where the plastic meets itself during a flow of the material into this. So as material is shooting into this part, there's areas where I might get some lines where the material kind of comes together where it cooled maybe too quickly. And those might be areas of stress that might cause fracture or breaking down the road. So you should be very aware of your weld lines and what they really mean to your design when you're putting your gate in and then when you're analyzing where that material is going to flow to. And then I can click on summary again to get that window back open. So what you're seeing here is a majority of what we have available to us from the mold flow integration. And really a lot of the software would not be able to function without that integration taking place. So if I look at my overall mold design, you can see I have a fill analysis for the entire mold because there's actually a multi-cavity operation going on in here. If I zoom in, let's say I just start turning off some components here so we can see better. Let me do a shift, right click, and go to part priority and turn off some visibilities. And when we take a look in there, you can see I actually have one mold on the left hand side and another one on the right hand side. I actually run a fill analysis with this mold and also a mold shrinkage. So I got some volumetric shrinkage during the injection procedure, and this will analyze all that for me. Again, these results were obtained by using the mold fill analysis, as well as the mold shrinkage right next to it.